The Chargers signed Gus Edwards on the first day of free agency and today I'm going to show you a bunch of his film from this past season and explain to you why I think this is such a great value addition to the Chargers, especially considering the running back market this season. So make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content, bro. It helps me out so much. And now let me start off with this contract because this is maybe the biggest reason why I think this is such a great value for Gus Edwards. He signed for two years and 6.5 million total with an average salary of $3 million. Now his cap hit for this year is only gonna be 2 million, which is insane value for a running back that was as good as he was for the Ravens and for so long. I mean, him and Nick Chubb are the only two players in NFL history to start their careers with three straight 700 plus rushing yard seasons at five or more yards per carry. And I understand that those are not the 1,000 yard seasons that you want to see from a running back, right? But the theme with Gus Edwards is efficiency over the flashiness. And a big reason that he was not a 1,000 yard rusher kind of guy is because in that Ravens offense, he was one of a few different running backs to share the load in that Ravens offense. It was a running back by committee, Plus, you also have Lamar Jackson running the ball. So you got a lot of guys that you're trying to feed. You're trying to give the ball to in specific situations. Gus Edwards was specifically the short yardage kind of guy. And he was really, really good at that. But when you got a ton of guys you got to feed, you get less opportunities. And that means that you're naturally going to have less yards. And since he was in that running back by committee offense, he doesn't have that wear and tear of a bell cow running back. Someone like Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, the guys like that do at that age. He's 28 years old right now. All of those guys are also in that age range. And as we know, as running backs get older, typically they get to a certain point and then they fall off a cliff in production. Gus Edwards, he has less of that wear and tear on his body at the age that he's at right now. So that encourages me that that is not going to happen with him anytime soon. Plus, he's got very, very high efficiency, which bodes well for him to not only outplay his contract, but be a very valuable piece in this offense. And when you look at the contracts that these other running backs were getting around the NFL and free agency, I, it just makes you really appreciate how little money the Chargers were able to secure Gus Edwards for. I mean, just look at all of these running backs getting absolutely paid, man. Austin Eckler, he got more than $4 million a year. Devin Singletary, $5.5 a year. Even Naheem Hines, Antonio Gibson, they both signed for more money than Gus Edwards did. And you cannot tell me, bro, that they are better running backs than him. Gus Edwards has averaged over five yards per carry his entire career outside of this past season where he had to take on more of those carries and he had almost 200 uh, rushes, but he still averaged 4.1 yards per carry and 810 yards. To put that into perspective, that was his worst season in terms of yards per carry. Austin Eckler last year, 179 carries, 3.5 yards per carry. So he had less attempts with less yards per carry, so worse efficiency, and only five touchdowns. Compare that to Gus Edwards, he had 13 touchdowns. So we're getting an upgrade with familiarity because obviously Greg Roman worked with Gus Edwards in Baltimore. He had his best years with Greg Roman, and so you're getting a better back for less money per year than Austin Eckler. Obviously, Gus Edward is not going to be the main guy. This is a guy who's going to come in and do his job just like he did in Baltimore and do it at a high efficient rate. He's going to be the short yardage back and the back that you bring in there just get five yards a pop. And he can also catch the ball. I mean, he's not Austin Eckler out of the backfield catch the ball kind of guy, obviously, but he had 13 targets all of last year. He caught 12 of them. So 12 of 13, that's pretty good. He can catch the ball. And also with those only 13 targets, he had one catch where he went 80 freaking yards down the field. Just look, I'm going to put the play up right here. He went 80 yards on this pass. This isn't a speedster, by the way, as you can tell, I'm sure. He's a bruiser that can just make one cut and boom, he can go right up the field. He's very forward, north and south kind of running back, kind of like Derrick Henry is. 
Obviously, he's not as good as Derrick Henry, but the point is, he's giving you maybe 60 to 70% of what Derrick Henry is going to give you, but he's doing it at about 30% of the cost because the Ravens, they actually are giving Derrick Henry now a two-year contract at 16 million overall, but 9 million guaranteed as opposed to Gus Edwards' 3 million guaranteed and you got to look at the guaranteed money here because the teams can do a lot of funky stuff with contracts nowadays that is a really good roster management decision though for the chargers and also this backfield it's not completed it's not just going to be gus edwards and i'm not saying that you should expect another running back to sign here in free agency because i don't think that's going to happen but in the draft I am very, very confident that there will be at least one running back selected because Jim Harbaugh drafts running backs. He used to draft running backs all the time in, in uh, San Francisco, but also Joe Hortiz did the same thing in Baltimore, drafting running backs like every year. Both of these guys love getting running backs in the draft and in undrafted free agency. They're going to be churning the bottom of the roster. Remember that. I think a lot of that is going to have to do with the backfield. You get those low money guys, the guys that, you know, Austin Eckler was an undrafted free agent. Look at the guy last year. Elijah Dotson was an undrafted free agent. The Chargers, even with Tom Telesco, were drafting running backs in like the fourth, fifth round all the time. We even drafted a running back in the first round. Oh my God, that's a bad memory. But when Joe Hortiz said he wants to build depth and he wants to keep that bottom of the roster churning, I think one of those positions that he's specifically talking about is the running back room. You draft running backs, you sign them in undrafted free agency or in free agency like Gus Edwards, and then you let them walk once their contracts are up and hope they sign for big money in free agency, kind of like Austin Eckler just did with the Washington Commanders. And then you hope for a comp pick based on their contract value, but also you got to keep in mind, it is based on playing time on this team that they signed with in free agency. And I think also the performance that they give. And I think it's also worth noting here that Gus Edwards was an undrafted free agent for the Ravens when Joe Hortiz was there. So he played a role in finding a guy like Gus Edwards He's going to be looking for a value running back in undrafted free agency this year as well, I'm sure. And Gus Edwards had an interview on Monday and he talked about why he chose the Chargers in free agency. He said it was because of the familiarity with a Harbaugh as coach, obviously, Jim Harbaugh and John Harbaugh. He just came from him with the Ravens, but also Greg Roman. And he talked about how this scheme is going to be very physical, very tough, running downhill. And that is what he wants to be a part of. But he also said that Greg Roman had added some new stuff to his playbook, some new wrinkles. But the basics and the fundamentals and the terminology, it is all still the same. So it's going to be interesting to see how different this offense is because Greg Roman, he had that year off this past season and he came out and said in an interview as well that, hey, you know, I'm always looking to innovate. And I did this past season. He reflected on what went well and what didn't go well with the Ravens. And hopefully he learned from it and he improved. I think we're going to see a lot of creative uses of running backs because Greg Roman, he's a very creative play caller and play designer, but I think what the Chargers are lacking right now is a running back that can really go out wide, be like a scat back, play in the slot, catch passes out of the backfield, somebody that can just <clears throat> be that change of direction kind of back to complement Gus Edwards. So look for a guy like that in the draft. And also... I think the Chargers are very interested in Blake Corum. They even brought him in for a visit. That's one of Jim Harbaugh's uh, guys. You can never rule out someone from Michigan being drafted to the Chargers. And Gus Edwards might be the most important signing this entire free agency because of how much the Chargers struggled in these past few seasons in those short yard situations. And I talked about Gus Edwards being an extremely efficient running back having an amazing average yards per carry and being a downhill runner. Doesn't have a lot of straight line speed, but he can bulldoze you and get into the end zone. I mean, how many times with Brandon Staley did we have a fourth and short situation and we didn't have anyone that we could hand the ball off to? I mean, we had Austin Eckler. We're not just going to hand the ball off to Austin Eckler to get two yards on a fourth and two. Now we have a guy that can do that. And I think that is going to be extremely valuable to this offense and that is going to help out justin herbert so much and if you didn't see my video yesterday i go into depth about why that running game is going to help out justin herbert 